the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. This is the story of the Pacific, the drama of the millions of people who live around this greatest sea, where the United States is now committed to a long-term policy of keeping the peace. This is the background story of the events in the Pacific and their meaning to us and to the generations to come. New Caledonia. Others on deck, but I was hardly aware of them. So much had happened. That last blast of the ship's whistle gave me a strange feeling. It was like the end of a chapter, or perhaps the start of a new one. The ship headed out of the harbor of Noumea, out through the pass, into the open sea. I was leaving New Caledonia. People had been coming here for centuries. Explorers, adventurers, missionaries, soldiers, spies. Good people, bad people. Some had stayed. Some had gone away. Why hadn't those first Englishmen and those first Frenchmen understood the value of New Caledonia? They ignored it. I wondered what might have happened to New Caledonia, except for that incident down in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Indeed, it is for me a great pleasure. <laughs> Quite. Well, to the French Navy. <laughs> Merci, the French Navy. <laughs> Excellent whiskey, this. Only place you can get it's out here in Sydney. How unfortunate that you must come halfway around the world to Australia to get it. Oh, it's worth it, worth it. <laughs> I'm satisfied with just a taste of wine. Mm, like you this. are a newcomer out here, I can see that. <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> The uh, first time your ship's been here in the Pacific? First time. Well, it's an old story with us. <laughs> they keep us in His Majesty's Navy busy, you know. Of course. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're out here on a mission now. Now? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, we've got orders to go over to the next New Caledonia. Me? Mm. <laughs> British naval officer's name is, you know, Captain Cook. Reminded him of Scotland. Oh. But our commander's in no hurry. Having such a sporting time here in Sydney. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why should he be in a hurry to leave here, huh? Eh? There's plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> yeah, I say, waiter. Well, will you fill up these glasses again? You'll make my double. <laughs> well, not long after the incident in Sydney, the commander of the French naval squadron in the Pacific, Admiral de Pointe, called his officers together in his cabin. We have received orders to proceed immediately to New Caledonia and claim the island for France. Our orders are to raise the flag at Balade and Ile de Pas. We will build a fort at each place to repulse any possible attacks. However, the orders stipulate that should any other nation already have claimed the island, we shall return here to our base and avoid any trouble whatever. Are there any questions? Very well. We will get underway for Balade at noon today. Dismissed. Admiral de Pointe raised the French flag at Balade, ordered the fort built, and then sailed for Ile de Pain. Several days later, he was approaching the harbor of Ile de Pain. Admiral de Pointe, look, there's a British warship anchored in the harbor. A British warship? Here, l let me take that long glass. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. It is HMS Herald. They have beat us here, sir. Yes. Shall we come about and head out to sea? No, 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 they have seen us. We will have to pay our formal respect to the commander of the Herald. We'll anchor on, alongside her. Yes, sir. But uh, look ashore. I see no British flag of the village. Do you? No, sir. Uh, 
Perhaps they have... Uh, um, not yet. Uh, yes, sir. Perhaps there is still a chance. Anchor alongside the Herald. Yes, sir. Not long after the French admiral dropped anchor, the commander of the British vessel, Captain Denham, paid a courtesy call. Admiral Dupont. We are honored, Captain Denham. Each knew why the other was there. They parried word through their pleasantries. Admiral Dupont carefully drew out the British officer. Uh, not much of anything, actually. We'll map out the coast and uh, then return to Sydney. Uh, navigation information, uh, you understand. Uh, yes, of course. Captain Denham returned to his ship. Admiral Dupont's suspicion grew. That same evening, he and his first officer returned Captain Denham's visit. They called on him aboard the HMS Herald. The captain was not expecting you this evening, sir. If you'll just make yourself comfortable here in his cabin, sir, I'll tell him you're here. No hurry at all. Yes, sir. Admiral Dupont. Yes? Look. Look what is on the captain's table there. Axes. Yes, shiny new axes, cut in cloth and glass beads. Just what I thought. He's going to bargain with the chiefs. Yes. We shall have to get back at once. Ah, Admiral Dupont. Ah, what a pleasant surprise to have you as my guest aboard tonight. <laughs> it is our pleasure. Are you ring for some wine? Uh, uh, what will you have? Oh, no, no, no. Merci, Captain Denham. I was just returning your call, and I'm afraid that I must go in a very few minutes. Back aboard his own ship, the French Admiral gave instructions to his first officer. There is no time to lose. You will go ashore immediately. You will go to the French missionaries and tell them to prepare for it. The other L directs that you missionaries go to the native chiefs and persuade them to accept the protection of the French flag. We will disembark before dawn. And by the time we land, you missionaries will have erected a flagpole for the raising of the French flag. First officer returned and reported that all preparations had been made. Before dawn and a heavy rain, the French boats with men and supplies landed on the island. And in the presence of the chief and many of the natives, the French flag was raised. At daylight, Captain Denham aboard the HMS Herald was awakened by the booming of cannon. French vessel, sir. But what are they shooting for? I think it's some kind of salute, sir. Salute? What kind of nonsense is this? The captain reached the topside just as the last of the 21-gun salute was being fired. Then he trained the long glass on the village ashore. They've raised the French flag. Aye, aye, sir. The French flag? That means... Law, my dig, I'm going ashore. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Denham tried to prevail on the chiefs to hold down the French flag and accept the protection of Britain. They refused. Then he went out among the natives. You have been sold out by your chiefs to the French. And what did you get out of it? Rise against your chiefs and set yourselves free. Captain Denham failed. He went back to Australia and killed himself. New Caledonia became a French island, but neither the French nor the English knew the value of the island. France used it for a penal settlement. 20,000 prisoners were sent to New Caledonia, thousands of them political prisoners. France itself paid so little attention to the development of the island that it hardly knew that the Marist missionaries had exploited the natives until the natives rebelled and almost threw the French out. I don't understand, Seeley. Why don't more Frenchmen come out here and develop this island? American businessmen came out looking for investments. Look at this island. 250 miles long and 30 miles wide. The climate's cool and dry. Five months of the year, the temperature is about 72. The rest of the time, about 65. We've already got the start of raising cattle here. Well, this country even looks like the range lands of the United States. The ranges are not fenced, and the cattle roam over the grazing lands and forests. And the mining, all the nickel and chromite and cobalt and iron here. Well, you'd think the French should come out here and get the industry going. But for the French investor, New Caledonia was too far away. Instead, American, British, Australian, and European capital came in, and they opened the mine. Almost from the first day you land in New Caledonia... You learned about the Société Le Nickel. It is an international company. Uh-huh. All the shareholders live outside New Caledonia. Big European money men. No Frenchman? Mm, perhaps. And this is just one of the Société's mines. The Société also owns ore deposits all over the island. In a practical sense, 
it has a monopoly on all the nickel in New Caledonia. Other foreign capital controls other mining concerns. Actually, the companies before the war were controlled by overseas money, even Japanese. Long before Pearl Harbor, the French colonials of New Caledonia mistrusted the Japanese. It was a mistake for us to sell mining property to the Japanese. Japanese interests founded the Société Le Fer to mine New Caledonia's iron. There are more than 20 million tons of iron ore on the island, and the Japanese are planning to take out half a million tons a year. The Japanese company tried again and again to get the right to bring in Japanese labor. No. The Japanese already here are not to be trusted. We must not make another mistake and permit them to bring in more. Shiploads of Tonkinese from Indochina and Javanese from the Netherlands Indies were brought in. The Japanese had an excuse for using this labor, which was virtually indentured. Uh, you will not uh, permit us to bring in a Japanese labor. The other companies had other reasons. Oh, the native people of New Caledonia will not work in mines or industries. We've got to bring in this kind of labor. They also had excuses for paying them wages, which in their own countries were forbidden by law. We cannot pay them more. Look what it cost us for transportation to bring them here. Besides, we brought them in under three-year and five-year contracts. By the time the France went to war in 1939, the Depression had almost ruined New Caledonia. Mm, it is good that these Tonkinese are going back to Indochina. Well, what about their contracts? <laughs> there is no work for them here. No, so they are being sent home. We cannot afford to take care of these thousands. The mines and metal industries are scarcely operating. And look what has happened to our agriculture. The plantations are growing up with weeds. And the cattle. We have today not one-fifth the cattle that we could raise. So we must bring our milk and our butter and even our vegetables and fruit all the way from Australia. Eh bien, it is good that these Tonkinese go back to Indochina. They have become a liability here. Pick up the gangplank! Stagnation had set in, and the rift was widening between the Frenchmen in New Caledonia and the Frenchmen in Paris who ran New Caledonia. The government has done as little as it could in New Caledonia and taken as much as it could. That is the trouble. The trouble was rolling up. The New Caledonian French had long chafed at the way New Caledonia was run. The governor is appointed by the Minister of Colonies in Paris, who has never been near to New Caledonia, nor understands our problems here in New Caledonia. Yes. Yes. The Privy Council is appointed from Paris, and nearly all of the civil positions are occupied by Metropolitans, who are sent out here, but who have no interest in New Caledonia, and who have no thought of settling New Caledonia. And what have we, a council general elected by secret ballot, but which is not actually a parliament, but only an advisory body which can be dissolved by the governor any time he wishes? What executive voice do we have in the affairs of New Caledonia? The New Caledonian Frenchmen watched the progress of the war in Europe. They were swept with anguish when Hitler's panzer divisions broke through and swarmed over France. They waited eagerly, desperately for each word from France. We are not getting information. What is happening? There was no word. None until it started filtering in. Monsieur Verge. Yes. France has surrendered. What? I have just heard. They have signed an armistice with Hitler. No, no, no. Yes, yes, it is true. They broke their word. They said they would never make a separate peace with Hitler. It was Pétain. Pétain? Why has this been kept secret from us? Why has this not been printed in the government gazette? It is treachery, Monsieur Verge. I must come for us to break with the government in France and deal with our own affairs. The news flew through New Caledonia. We have been deceived. The have been betrayed. Oh, no, 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 with no, 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 The local parliament, the Conseil General, submitted a proposal to Governor Pellissier that New Caledonia be granted autonomy until the end of the war and asked that he cable this proposal to the Patan government at Vichy. Unfortunately, it is not possible to do this. 
It is the will of the people of New Caledonia. I am charged with the responsibility for New Caledonia, Mr. Vale. The people do not concur in the action taken by the Vichy government. I cannot cable the message you propose. I will, however, inform the Vichy government of the position taken by the people of New Caledonia. Several days later, Governor Pellissier announced the text of his cable to the Vichy government. Considering that France, in full agreement with Britain, had promised never to sign a separate peace or truce, Considering that France has signed an armistice with Nazi Germany, New Caledonia, therefore, has decided to continue the fight against the Axis powers at the site of Great Britain. But this was not enough. New Caledonia was still tied to Vichy France, still subject to the men who had surrendered France and were collaborating with Hitler. Monsieur Verge prepared a petition. We demand local autonomy for New Caledonia. We demand a freely elected assembly with full executive power. The Conseil General was no more than an advisory body. Governor Pellissier cracked down on Monsieur Verge. Monsieur Verge, you are under arrest. For what? Do we not even have the right of petition? You are charged with disturbing the public morale. Monsieur Verge was jailed, but the sentiment he expressed was still in the hearts of the people, and they were free. We cannot continue under France. I demand that New Caledonians immediately be placed under the protection of the United States and Australia. <laughs> No, no! This is not the solution. We shall fight at the side of Britain, but it is not practical for us, an isolated island out here in the Pacific, to cut loose from our mother country and seek the protection of two other countries. As Governor Pellissier was leaving, a telegram was handed to him. It was from Patin. From information reaching me from certain colonies, it seems that some governors, by inadmissible defection from duty, have not exercised or personally supervised the rigorous application of gov government orders. These defections will be mercilessly punished. Cable acknowledgement of this message. He thrust a telegram into his pocket, went back to his quarters, and secretly cabled Patin and Vichy. My decision, taken with full approval of the Secretary General and chief army commander as being the only ones of fait with circumstances and geographic location of New Caledonia. Ask you to realize these elements in judging the situation in my colony. Signed, Pellissier. What way the wind was now blowing was clear to Governor Pellissier. He released Monsieur Verge from jail. Verge immediately resumed work on his petition, demanding local autonomy. He presented it to the Consul General... And the Consul General drew up a program. We demand a freely elected popular assembly with full executive powers. What they asked, in effect, was an actual voice in governing themselves. Governor Pellissier ignored it. The last straw snapped several days later. Look at this in the government gazette. What? This. This decree of Pétain. Let me see. He has revoked the Constitution of France and substituted a totalitarian government. Then this applies to New Caledonia. Of course, it commits New Caledonia to And the... we were neither informed nor consulted. Not only that, it means that Pellissier has been in contact with the Vichy government behind our back. Pellissier has deceived us. The public was outraged. The Consul General called a special meeting. Read the motion. Considering... That the promulgation of Petain's decree was made without consultation with the Conseil General. The Conseil General disapproves of Monsieur le Gouverneur and declares that his words and deeds are incompatible. The Conseil General, to avoid all misconceptions, has decided to establish direct relations with General de Gaulle. <laughs> Governor Pellissier had been defied. The governor tried to compromise. It was too late. The bomb had missed him, but he knew its meaning. 
The Consul General put it in words several days later. Only the departure of the Governor can bring peace to New Caledonia. Patin dismissed Pelissier and elevated the command of the forces, Lieutenant Colonel Denis, to his place. A committee was formed to call on the new governor. We ask that a referendum be held. A referendum? Yes. My a good referendum. friends, it is a question of force. If you are stronger, you will win. If we are stronger, we will win. The lieutenant colonel smiled at the delegates. Fury boiled up in them as they left. Colonel Denis. Yes? We have just received intelligence that Monsieur Henri Sateau, the resident commissioner in the New Everies, is on his way here to take over your duties as governor. Sateau? He is at the Gauris. Yes. He has already declared for free France. Ah, arrest him the minute he sets foot on New Caledonia. But word of the coming of Sauteau had also reached the people. And from secret headquarters of the Free French Movement, messages were sent out to all the centers where the sympathizers of the Free French were rallying. The hour has come to show that you are willing to take your destinies into your own hands. Time presses. Prepare immediately to assemble at 6 a.m. in Noumea. The hour is grave. Keep eye your hearts. Vive la France! Vive de Gaulle! Vive la Caledonie! Vive la Caledonie! Vive la Caledonie! Vive la piled into 80 trucks in the interior and before daylight rolled into Numea. <laughs> in Lieutenant Colonel Denis' headquarters, a vigil had been kept all night. Colonel Denis, a convoy of trucks loaded with Boussard have made their way through the barricades. This is mutiny. They have come in to receive Toto when he lands. No, drive them back. It is too late, Colonel Denis. I will show you how to deal with them. Uh, come with me. The streets were thronged. The whole population had turned out to meet Soto. The Norwegian freighter which was carrying him was coming in through the pass. Signal the ship not to land. Order it to go away. Yes, sir. Colonel Denis says to signal the ship not to land, to go away. Yes, sir. At once, sir. The semaphore station on top of the hill signaled to the Norwegian freighter. But below the Broussard were watching. Look at that, up there. The semaphore station. What? They are signaling to the ship. Uh, do not land. Return at once. To New Everydays. So that is the order of Colonel Denis. Up the hill! Take the semaphore station! Take the semaphore station and signal the ship to come in! <laughs> Broussard overran the station and the ship was signaled to come in. Sauteau landed. In the name of Free France and the General de Gaulle, Lieutenant Colonel Denis will have until 3 p.m. to vacate the governorship. After 3 p.m., I shall be the governor of New Caledonia. New Caledonia had been snatched from the Vichy government. But Japan was now a member of the Axis, and we were alone. Our concern about the Japanese in New Caledonia grew as the situation in the Pacific grew more tense. The attack on Pearl Harbor struck us like a thunderbolt. And when the news came of the simultaneous attacks on the Philippines, Malaya, and Burma, we waited uneasily. The Japanese rolled like a tidal wave down through the Indies and New Guinea and the Solomons within 700 miles of us, and nothing to stop them. We waited. I was awake. I threw off the covers and in a bound was at the door. It was my Melanesian houseboy. What is it, midnight? Ships come. Many ships. You hurry. Where? Way out. Coming in. So it had happened. I threw my clothes on. Downstairs, the lobby of the Hotel Sebastopol was alive with half-wakened, half-dressed people. In the dawn, they scurried to get away like bugs when a rock is left in. Midnight had the car at the door by the time I got down. How many ships have been sighted? The Frenchman with us peered out through the gloom. How many were reported, Midnight? Many. They are Japanese. Our nearest help is in Australia, 750 miles west. 
American forces were gathering in Australia. But it is too late now. I wondered what we'd do. If the Japanese were coming in many ships, our situation was hopeless. The invasion force would certainly be greater than the entire population of Noumea, and possibly almost as great as the 50,000 population of the entire island. Stop here. No more road. People were gathered at the point, straining their eyes to see the ships on the horizon. In the gray of the dawn, the sea almost blended with the sky. There is one. There. See it? I could just make out the outline. It looked like a warship. There is another. And two more. Transports. The people, Frenchmen, Americans, Australians, Britishers, a few Melanesians and Polynesians, stood there. What they thought was written on their faces. We waited. Maybe we hide in hills, Mr. Seeley. Oh, huh? midnight. The Frenchman shaded his eyes and squinted. Look at all of them. Coming up over the whole horizon. I thought about all the Japanese residents on the island. The flag on the vessels. You can see it, Monsieur Seeley? No. My eyes are That not... is not the Japanese flag on those vessels. What? Look sharp. See if you can make out what flag it is. The flags were hanging listlessly in the calm. American flag. American yes, flag. they are American. America? Yes, it is an American force. They are American ships. Are American. I yelled as loud and as long as the rest of them. And as we yelled, Midnight just stood there and looked at us. I had the feeling that he knew more about the importance of New Caledonia than any of us. Admiral Gormley and General Patch beat the Japanese to New Caledonia. Millions of dollars went into airfields, shore installations, docks, roads, facilities of war. New Caledonia became the bastion that stopped the southward drive of the Japanese. From New Caledonia, the Great Pacific counterattack was launched against Guadalcanal, a counterattack which at last ended in Tokyo. Today, New Caledonia's biggest wall is done. Yes, Monsieur Verge. The big airfields are just about deserted. And our armors, where once aircraft carriers and other men of war used to anchor, are empty. Yeah. But the problems of New Caledonia were not settled by the war. Do you think New Caledonia will ever go back to her pre-war status? Never. We will never again be simply a distant outpost of France. The value of New Caledonia is at last known. Commanding the southern flank of U.S. communications in the Pacific, it bids well in the days to come to be of greater importance, not only to France, but because of its strategic importance to the United States and to all the United Nations. have been listening to the Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. May I repeat, for a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coins to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. The Pacific Story is written and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. The principal voice was that of Jack Edwards, Sr. Programs in this series of particular interest to service men and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. 
This program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.